Let's look at how we can include CSS into our HTML documents. When it comes to using CSS with HTML, there are a few ways to apply CSS to a file. CSS can either be attached as a separate document or embedded into the HTML document itself. There are three methods of including CSS into your document. The first is inline styles. You can apply inline styles directly to an element. Next, we have embedded styles. These use the style element and they reside in the head section of your document. And finally, we have external style sheets. We use the link element and this points to an external CSS file, which gets pulled into the HTML. Inline styles are used to apply unique style rules to an element by putting the CSS rules directly into the start tag. They can be attached to an element using the style attribute. The style attribute includes a series of CSS property and value pairs. Each property value pair is separated by a semicolon, just as you would write into an embedded or external style sheet. But everything needs to be done on one line. There are no line breaks after the semicolon, as shown here. Using the inline styles are generally considered bad practice, as style rules are embedded directly inside the HTML tag. This causes the presentation to become mixed with the content of the document, which makes the code difficult to maintain and negates the purpose of using CSS. Let's look at an example. In order to demonstrate inline CSS, I'm going to be using this file that I have set up. This is a basic HTML page, and as you can see, there's no style formatting attached to this particular page. What we'll do is we'll go into the H1 element and I'm going to use the style attribute. Then I put equal and inside the quotes, I'll pass in the property value pairs. So if we wanted to change the color of our H1, we can specify color and then we can specify a keyword or hex value in order to set the style of this particular element. You'll terminate your property value pair with a semicolon. And if you want to add additional property value pairs, they just continue inside of the quotes. So if I wanted to control the font size, I could go ahead and specify font size and then put the value. If we save the page and we refresh, you can see how the formatting has been attached to this particular H1 element. Embedded or internal styles only affect the document that they are embedded within. Embedded styles are defined in the head section of the HTML document using the style element. You can define any number of style elements in the HTML document, but they must appear between the opening and closing head tags. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to use some embedded styles. So as I mentioned, the embedded styles go inside of the head element. I'll go ahead and I'll use the style tags and any CSS that you want to include needs to reside within the style tags. So in this case, if we go ahead and we set the background color and the header, I'm going to specify the selector as header. I'll go ahead and within the curly braces, I'm going to add my declarations. So for now, I'll go ahead and I'll specify the font family and we'll just set that to a sans serif. And then I'm going to set the background color and we'll just specify that we want this to be gray. If we save and we refresh in the browser, you can see that those changes are going to be reflected and they're only affecting the header element since that is the particular element that I targeted. Embedded styles will only affect the document that they're in. So they can be good for unique design requirements that only affect a specific page or a single page document. They are not very useful if you want to have global style management across multiple pages since they are page specific. Next, let's talk about external style sheets. An external style sheet is ideal when the style is applied to many pages of the website. An external style sheet holds all the style rules in a separate document so that you can link from any HTML file on your website. External style sheets are the most flexible because with an external style sheet, you can change the look of an entire website by changing just one file. 
Let me show you what that looks like. In order to add an external style sheet, you need to use the link element. So we'll go ahead and specify link. Link takes two attributes. You need to have the href attribute, which is where you're going to point to your CSS file. Now currently, I do not have a CSS file, so let's create one. I'll make a new file inside my CSS folder, and we'll just call this style.css. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and specify something very simple on the body. Like, let's add a background color. I'm going to set the background color to a light blue. I'll use the hex value of 9cf. Now if I save my page, no change is going to occur, and that's because I haven't completed my link element. So here's the link element. We'll go ahead and we'll specify the href value. I need to point to this style file, which is inside my CSS folder. So I'll write CSS forward slash style dot CSS. In addition to needing the href attribute, you're also going to need the rel attribute. The rel attribute sets up the relationship. And so what we're doing here is we're specifying that the relationship is that of a style sheet. The link tag is a self-closing tag or empty tag. So if you want to self-close it, you can go ahead and add that. If we save now and we refresh, you can see that the background color of my entire page has changed to this blue. Now where the real power of external styles kicks in is when you use it on multiple pages. So for this particular document, I have two additional pages, page one and page two. Now since I don't have any links to these pages, I've just opened them in my browser. So this is page one and this is page two. Let's go ahead and let's add the external style to both of these pages. I'll open page one and once again in the head section, I'm going to go ahead and use my link element. Now, because I'm in the pages folder, I need to come out of that directory and get into the root folder. And then I'll go into the CSS folder and find the file that I want to link to. Once again, this is an empty tag, so I'll just go ahead and self close it. If we refresh page one, you can see that the background color turns to blue. I'm going to do the exact same thing on page two, add our link element, set the rel to style sheet, and then for our href value, we'll go out of the pages folder into the CSS folder and find the appropriate file that we want to link to. It is worth noting that the order of the rel and the href attributes don't matter, so these can be switched around. Now if we go to page two and refresh, it also takes on these properties. Now where the power of CSS really shines is that if we decide that we want to change the background color to some other new color, all we need to do is go into the one CSS file and specify that change. So if I go back to my CSS file, the external CSS file, and we change this from a blue to a yellow, I'm going to use the hex value of FC6. I'll save the external file. And now when we refresh, all of the pages are going to switch to having a yellow background, every single one. As you can see, this is extremely powerful. The external styles allow us to globally control our web page in one place. It is worth mentioning that there are actually two ways in which you can attach external style sheets, linking and importing. An external style sheet can be linked to an HTML document using the link tag. The link tag always goes inside the head section as I just demonstrated. The other way of adding CSS is to use the at import rule. This is another way of loading an external style sheet. The at import statement instructs the browser to load an external style sheet and use its styles. You can actually do this in two ways. The simplest is within the header of your document. You'll notice that the other CSS rules may be included. So you're just going to embed the at import rule into your style elements. In this example, I've set the style element to have an attribute of type equal to text forward slash CSS. 
This attribute is not required, but you may see it, so I did want to demonstrate what it looks like. Older browsers required that we specified this, but now with HTML5, it's not necessary. Similarly, you can use the at import rule to import a style sheet within another style sheet. So you would actually go into your external style sheet file and up at the top, you're going to use at import. You just need to make sure that the path to that particular file is correct based on where the CSS is located. It is worth mentioning that all at import rules must occur at the start of the style sheet whether you're using the style element or placing it into an external document. Any style rule defined in the style sheet itself could override the imported styles since they come later on. We will talk about overriding and which elements take precedent in an upcoming video. The at import rule is not recommended due to performance issues. So while you may use it every once in a while, it's probably not something you want to focus on. Among the three methods that I just showed you, using external style sheets is the best method for defining and applying styles to all of your HTML documents. As you can see, with external style sheets, the affected HTML files require minimal changes in the markup, and all of the changes occur in one document. This will give you a lot more control and make it much easier to make changes to your website.